Listening to everything that you've said, Professor, surprises me at how you continue to be so negative about the job that Fed Chair Powell has done. You did a discussion with the New York Fed President John Williams, and I know you know where I'm going because I just saw the look yeah. at your face. I saw the look on your face. This was at the Economic Club of New York where you said, you said, quote, giving Powell a Nobel Prize would be like giving the Nobel Prize to a drunk driver that ran over a pedestrian but got him to the hospital in time to save his life. How can you say that after you suggest the economy is so strong, the market is ripping and from the lows, and we don't need any rate cuts, but yet he, the Fed chair has done a terrible job? How? I stand by that quote. Scott, remember 2021 and 2022, we had an incredible boom, housing market, stock market, crazy speculation, SPACs, NFTs, and everything. Uh, at the same time, the Fed was buying mortgage-backed securities, keeping interest rates at zero telling banks and everyone else we're not letting those rates rise. That's the fault. Yeah, I think they landed on their feet, but we shouldn't have been in the situation that we were in with inflation that was actually over 10 percent of properly measured and still w went up over these four years, uh, you know, higher than many people's wages and the source of a lot of people's dissatisfaction with the economy. So, yes, he landed on his feet, luckily at the end, but he didn't have to do, he, we shouldn't have had to go through what we went through. That you, is you, what I meant. It feels that like beginning, you lay all, okay I, ending. I feel like you lay all the blame, though, at, at the Fed chair's feet. He's not the one who came up with the Inflation Reduction Act. He is not the one who passed all the other stimulus. And maybe we did that in a level of excess that caused more of the inflation than the Fed waiting too long to start raising interest rates. Scott, he did not have to give the presidents all the money that they wanted to, uh, to spend $9 trillion on you know, four separate programs, two under Trump, two under Biden, you know, nine times the stimulus we had in a much worse financial crisis in 2007 and eight. He just printed the money and handed to them. What is he That's why he doesn't no control tax fiscal increase, policy. no going to the bond market. He did not have to do that. If he did not have to do that, we would have raised interest rates in 2021. We would not have had the inflation that we had over the last four years. Many people would look at the scenario now and say, you know what, it was a very difficult job that he had. He had to raise interest rates in such a rapid uh, pace, the fastest in 40 years. Right. The inflation uh, was, was nine, a, inflation he, was nine percent. And look where right. they've gotten it. They've managed to, as you, in your words, land the plane and we have a stock market that hits record highs. Right. But, they, you know, they, they landed the plane. But it doesn't mean that we can forgive him for what happened over four years with a cumulative inflation of 20 percent. He land, he's landing the plane on a soft landing, and I give him credit for that. But I certainly am still extremely critical of the Fed in the first two years following the pandemic. Let's look back at the market, uh, which we said, you know, obviously it's had a bit of a turbulent week. And now we're on the cusp of earnings, which are going to have a large decision in where this thing goes from here. What are you expecting? I mean, expectations are down from where they were. We're still looking for four to five percent growth in the quarter. But what are your own expectations? I think that those are right. I mean, what normally happens when you look out on uh, expectation is they come down during the year and then they go below so that firms surprise by a penny or two pennies or five cents on the upside. It's called the hook. So you see them start going down over time. And then about a week, two weeks before the announcements, they hit their low and then we beat by two or three percent. And that's pretty good. Uh, in terms of looking at, at the year over year. It looks like GDP is in the low twos. Uh, you know, the Fed thinks 2.1 for the, for the whole year. I actually think it might be even higher than that. Um, so, and, you know, in the background, you know, Scott, we, we do have AI um, that I think is really over the next 10 years going to raise productivity by 1% or more in the economy. And that's a very positive long-term uh, outlook for equities. And, and uh, you know, some people.